Welcome to the Rustic Garden Homestead. Today I want to show you my curing station, a place to dry potatoes, sweet potatoes, garlic, onions, herbs, anything that needs to be cured, kind of toughen up a little bit before they go into storage is going to come into here. I used to just kind of leave stuff around the yard. Um, I didn't want to go to my basement. I wanted it in a place that is close to the garden that I could check on. And this is a shady part of my garden. So this first part is just going to show you how I designed this. I don't have instructions. This was built to actually fit this space. So I'd like you to use this as principles and maybe you could build something like this off of the ideas. My plan, mostly square, mostly level. I wanted to reuse a lot of things from the homestead and I just wanted it to be really functional. So it is tucked into a space that is between my shed and between the main garden. And it's real easy to get to, enough space to walk in there. So the first thing is I did decide to put a door on it. After I go over just showing you this, I'll be putting in lots of parts to just give you ideas of what you might use, you know, for your build. I'll get into more details of different things that I'm doing, but for those of you with a short attention, the first four or five minutes will go over everything that's happening. So I'm leaving the bottom open right now because I'm not sure if I want to put in some more drawers or different things in there. The door opens up, latches over here and it closes nicely. I'll go over what's inside in a second. So it's just gonna shut and close like that. Coming on this side, enough room to walk through here. And I built this so that this sidewall will just come right off. It just latches on to this board right here. And, you know, depending on what's going on, I may want it on, I may want it off just for more airflow. But what I really like about this design was this piece. You can just slide your onions in just like this, you know, space them out when they're larger and they can dry here for that two week period. You can do the same thing with garlic. Coming up to this level and because this is bigger, you know, I want to be able to reach in. So I've got this top part made from an old shelf wire rack over there. A couple of baskets from thrift stores. This is my garlic that was sitting out you know, on the soil, baking for a good seven to 10 days. That's why I decided to finally build something like this. The potatoes are out there too long, but they look good. So this whole top level is just made from baskets, wire rack. Let's come back around this way. If you're putting on a door, you do want to use at least three heavy duty latches. You want this to last. I don't worry about it, you know, like I was saying, being level or being square, you know, perfectly anyway. Just functional. So this is, you know, the level that I was just showing you. And then here, this slides out. And I have potatoes on the screen. And I just made this kind of drawer to slide right into here. Now, this is too heavy to kind of bring the whole drawer out to the garden. I'll have a five gallon bucket down there, put in my potatoes, whatever I need, and then, you know, they'll just slide right into there. So it's really functional. The airflow is there, opened up the, kept the tops open on the side, opened up the back. It's not so bad to have some light coming in. I have morning light coming in from behind me. I could leave this open. And again, it all depends on what I'm drying. I'll be drying peppermint, which if I spin around slowly, you can just see all that mint over there. So some of that I will be dry, drying. Let me come back. But I really around. like the design. I'm gonna be hanging some string up there, some hooks so that I can also dry herbs from up there. But this is just the basic design. I'll show it to you from the inside of the garden where it looks like an outhouse, but that's just the way it is. But this is really functional and it's gonna make a big difference. Here's the back view and I can get to it coming through here and walk right into there if I needed to. And this is where it starts looking more like the outhouse. But it's tucked in a place where the nectarine tree um, actually blocks some of the southern and western sun. So everything is going to stay nice and cool in there and it was placed there by design. And again, I built the size to really fit the space 
and to work around the racks and different things that I had. And this is what it's going to look like from inside the garden. That does have, you know, the classic shape of an outhouse. And maybe I'll paint it white. I don't know. But it's totally functional. It's something that I needed. It's going to really make a difference with me taking care of everything that I've been growing for 90 days and 100 days. When we come out here, I'll show you real quick the potatoes. They were all sitting out here for far too long. A lot of them, these kind of got beat up. Just trying to cover them. I usually harvest the potatoes, let them sit outside for a day or two on the ground, and then I would get them into the curing station. But it just wasn't functional. I was producing too much, didn't have a place to put them, so I spent the day, well actually two days, building the curing station. So that's pretty much the, the design. And you would just set, set yours up using some of the ideas that I showed you and just build it to really meet your needs. All right, so the rest of the video will be showing you um, bits and pieces of my curing station as I was building it. And it'll give you some tips and ideas to keep in mind when you're building yours. As mentioned, I kind of create and cut without a plan and that's not best practice. However, I just want to show you the principles. So this is where I'm building the cabinet and the drawer. The cabinet, the outer pieces of wood, are what's going to hold the drawers that slide in. So the cabinet always has to be wide enough so that you can insert the whole drawer. And this is going to be sort of the bottom and then these posts will go in, building the cabinet upward and one of them is a foot shorter. That's so that I can put some sort of roof on there. The water's going to drain off and we'll see what I create as I go on. But the easiest way to do it is to really make the drawer the dimension of whatever rack or wire you, you're using. And this is um, 36 inches. It's upside down, but that's 36 inches. So this piece is 36 inches. Going across here is 40 and I'll unroll it. And I made it 40 so that I can maximize the amount of um, netting in here or screening in here. Um, I just didn't want to go further so 80 inches is pretty good. I could have done 42 and that's going to be how the drawer slides in. It'll have to have some more braces underneath and all that but I'll show you that. But the first part of the design and the reason I want to show you principles is to decide how big you want to make it. You can make it as small or as large but you have to make sure that the outer cabinet easily allows for you to slide the drawer in when you're building something like this. There's a million ways to build this, and here are the principles to keep in mind. So I decided I want the roof to be in the front, or the high part of the roof in the front, so that's the highest post. Slopes down by a foot to back there, and I'll build some sort of roof on there. I want to have drawers that slide in there, so you have to be careful that if you take these beams and you put them on the inside of the frame, and you frame the drawer to fit something like that, this beam would be in the way. So. I have mine designed a little bit differently that I can slide this in, it'll hit the back, there'll be a, a gap back there for airflow, I may put in some solar fans, but you just want to make sure that when you're designing a drawer to slide into something, you take into account how you put in these support posts. So it's in the location that I want it to be at, and you don't want to build this somewhere and then have to kind of drag it all over here. It's kind of heavy, especially if you're one person. So generally build the frame like this. This is where it's going to sit, it'll have... The nectarine tree, keeping shade on it. There'll be a panel or a tarp right there. I'm deciding what I'm going to put on. You know, over time, I'll probably look for a cheap piece of wood to put on there, but I might just use a tarp to start with until I can get something cheaper and kind of put, you know, sides on it. Moved it to the location I want. This is Cocoa Core. I don't recommend using this. It was an experiment. It doesn't decay. It's not very stable. I have to level this off first. But before you put the frame together and put in multiple screws, what I recommend is just put one in. There's one screw right there. That makes it real easy to move this. There's only one screw down in there. And you can adjust all these beams, or all these boards really, to put them into the location you want. Once you put two screws in there or three screws in there, you're not going to be able to have any kind of wiggle room. So this is where I want it to be. I will kind of get it into the position that I want, level everything off put in the second and third screw, and then I will start assembling it so that I can put in the drawers and build the racks for the onions and for the garlic. And this is a close-up of how I'm building the rack to dry the onions upside down. They're going to hang in here. You'll see that in the video. These are one by twos, even though they're not quite an inch here, they just round up, but one by two by eights, 
cut into 32 inch sections that will vary depending on the size of the uh, you know curing station or drying rack that you're building but two screws because that keeps them from kind of moving like that and all I'm doing is I'm using the width of this to set in the next piece and I'm just gonna work my way down and the onions will just slide right into here or the garlic will slide into here bigger onions you do every other garlic probably could go into each one of these and you'll just slide one two three four whatever amount of onions you can get on there you can do one level two level of these racks just depending on what you're growing as mentioned one of my goals is to really fit it into this space and to reuse a lot of the materials that I had here on the homestead so the design is built to fit my space but again you can use these principles so I'm using a couple of baskets up top here garlic etc this is an old rack from shelving in my garage and it works really well for potatoes I'll be enclosing this in some way but I'll have a door in the front and I'll have something removable here because this is kind of large and I want to be able to get inside and you know work with things this is where Onions will go to dry along with garlic when I have, you know, one that looks like that. I think this really will make a big difference. Maybe put it in a second level. Up top, which is not in yet, will be something, you know, going across where I can hang and dry herbs. And of course, it will be all enclosed. But I'm kind of building slowly. This pulls out. And you can see, you know, everything that's in there. This is an old piece of screen in there. It is a lot <laughs> going into this space. And what I realized is, you know, I am just really growing lots of potatoes and onions. Maybe I'll need a second one or I'll have to stagger things so that stuff can cure. I can get it to where it needs to go and then the next wave will come in. I'll leave the space again, probably open in some way to start because I'm not sure exactly, you know, do I want another, you know, maybe shelf like this or something like that or more for onions I'm not sure but this is let me step back so you got a glimpse of how I create out of my head don't really put anything down on paper uh, it's starting to lightning and thunder actually so I'm closing this up I wanted to show you the wall the wall gets put on just like that everything looks pretty good gonna close it over obviously you got the rain coming so everything is functioning how I want and what I did notice with the rain coming if a heavy rain comes this way and starts washing water in there I'm not going to want that and for potatoes I don't worry too much but if I have herbs drying in there I don't want that so I'll probably get some old tarp and just roll it up here and I'll just be able to unroll it and let it hang here um, in case I need to you know close this up for a heavy rainstorm or something like that thanks so much for watching please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe I'll teach you how to grow food and build things for your garden thanks for watching